Good evening to everyone present here today. We have our product manager Jason D'Souza who will walk us through the second episode of how to find winning stocks from the news. Towards the end, we would also be having a Q&A session. Over to you, Jason. A very warm welcome to all investors gathered here for today's event. I hope you are enjoying your weekend. And you all might know in this particular episode or in this particular series of picking winning stocks from the news, we go outside the website. Okay, throughout the week we do webinars which are on the website or I do webinars or demo events which speak about the features on Markets Mojo. But in this particular series, we try to go out and we try to see different newspaper, magazine articles, so on and so forth. I had previously done this particular event and some of you all really liked it. So what I've done this week, I've maintained a particular format and I'll take you across the same. Just a disclaimer that investment in securities is subject to market risk. Past performance should not be construed as a guarantee for future returns. So how exactly will we be going ahead with this particular series? What I am going to do when it comes to winning stocks from the news? It's very simple. We look at the top news articles, okay, throughout the week. This time I've looked at Monday to Friday and we'll pick one article from each particular day and we'll just review that particular article. We look at the highlights and what's exactly happening. And then the most important thing, the most important learning, which I want to give each and every one of you today is how to convert this particular news article into an investment idea. How do we, you know, look in through the news, which has been written by the particular author and how do we actually look at which sector is it related to what are the different parameters we should look at and then create a particular investment idea. And finally, we'll also monitor the performance of these particular screens. Okay. We can add these particular stocks into our watch list and portfolio, and we can monitor them on a regular basis. One particular thing you should understand that these are stocks we study, but they are not recommendations. They are not recommendations from Markets Mojo. These are ideas for you to actually develop. And if you are comfortable, you will add them into your portfolio. We are here to learn how to pick stocks. We are not here to go and straightforward invest. Okay. So these are not recommendations. I just want to make it clar clarify on this. These are ideas and news articles from which can give us a stepping, st stepping point on how to go forward when we read news articles. Okay. Last time when I came with this particular series, I had spoken about a particular author on how he has advised us to read news articles. Okay. And I spoke about three points. I'll go through those three points again. So some of you all who must have attended my event last time might find this a bit repetitive, but I've also added two more points from his particular article. Okay. This article is available on the web. So it's understanding financial news by Morgan Uzu. He's also the author for the famous book, which we've done a webinar on which was psychology of money. Okay. So, the first particular point which he says is you should read things you are know you know you're going to disagree with. What he means by this is that if you have a particular idea in your mind or if you've purchased your particular favorite stock, it's natural that you end up reading more articles that reinforces your belief why you've bought that stock. Okay, if you bought a particular stock, let's say from the FMCG sector, when you read news articles going forward, you will actually end up you know, searching for those articles which support your belief. Okay. And it's a very simple thing. It's called confirmation bias. Okay. And as you get an idea in your mind and you're going through the different magazines and news articles, your mind basically removes out things you're going to disagree with and sticks to things you're going to agree with. But what I suggest to you is that if you have any favorite author, if he's written something which is not according to your view, still read it get that perspective, also understand his opinion. And it's very important for us to start off with that particular note. The second point which he's made in this particular article is that every news can't be actionable. Okay. If you find yourself tempted to tweak your portfolio after reading news, do your future self a future and read less of it. Okay. If there's any particular thing, which is, you know, randomly coming up in the newspaper, you can't attribute that, pick it up and start investing with it. Okay. Every particular news cannot be actionable. You might end up churning your portfolio very often. Okay. And you know, that's not what we are here for. So if you read a particular news, you don't need to be extremely excited about it and start making changes. Instead, you could read it for knowledge, but don't think that every particular news you read is going to be actionable in nature. The third and the interesting point was review the old news as well. And the reason for that is he you quickly realized two things that the majority of predictions never come close to being true. And what we think is important is quite trivial in the long run. Okay. We have gone through things like the COVID multiple rate hikes. We also had, you know, uh, the real estate Evergrande issue in China. When that particular news comes up on that particular day, when you're reading any breaking news or a big article, 
what you should keep in mind is that will this particular news affect my investments six months down the line, one year down the line? Is it a major structural change that will affect my investments many years down the line? Or is it something that's only trending for this particular week? Okay, you need to understand that there is a major job by all these media houses that they have to get a lot of readers. Okay, they need to make every news sound like a breaking news. They need to make everything sound like it's the end of the world. But we as retail investors need to, you know, differentiate between that. We need to understand, you know, what things can really be not a major, not a major thing in the long run. Okay, so you should also classify and read the old news because when you read them, you will realize that whatever you read today was actually very short in the in the longer run. Okay. So these three things are also covered last time. Okay, some of you might remember, but there are two more points from his article, which I want to show in this particular event. The first one is that understand that people play different games. Okay, and this particular line over here is quite interesting. A long term investor sees a headline about selling stocks before earnings and shakes his head in disbelief. A trader reads an article about stocks for the long run and thinks that people are oblivious. Momentum investors think they are both missing it. Finally, bond investors think all three parties are crazy. What I mean by that is when you're investing in the market versus your friend or neighbor, he's playing a different game. You might be playing a different game. Understand that particular thing. There might be a particular article in the newspaper, which is appealing to a particular player. Okay. It might not appeal to your long-term story. It might not appeal to a trader's story. Every one of us right now in the market, whether it's the bond market, the equity market, short term, long term, we are all in different games. Okay, and what news you might find very interesting or what news you might find very important to you might be very, you know, least important to someone else who's a trader. Okay, so we all of all of us here are in a different game and we need to acknowledge that particular thing. The last point was actionable takeaways should be rare, which is very important. Why read something if it doesn't lead to an actionable takeaway? I'll tell you why. The person writing the article has no idea who you are, what are your goals, what's your situation and how will it affect you? If you reach to a particular article, which is rare in nature, which is more personalized to you, then you're blessed because most of the articles you're reading over here, that author has to, you know, you know, actually stereotype you or compartmentalize you on what kind of investments you're doing. He won't actually know who is Jason. Is he an aggressive investor? Does he invest in the bond market? Does he invest in the equity market? And as you read many newspapers, I think in a year, if you read a newspaper daily, you might realize that there might only be 20, 30 instances where that particular news article has been written for you is actually fitting your risk profile is actually fitting your belief. Okay. So these things would be rare. And in the next slide, I'll show you how you can actually classify them as rare or something, which is very common. And when you're reading newspapers, how you should actually easily remove out things which are important to you or personalized for you and simply ignore the other noise. Okay, so these are the five points. Uh, this article is available on Google. Just simply search it. And there are many websites who've written this particular article by Morgan Ozo. This particular chart I'm going to talk about, okay, which will help you bucket things. Now, if you're reading any particular news article and you want to make an investment idea, what's very important is that you will have to negate a lot of articles and news, which isn't that important. Okay, which could be biased in nature, which could be actually selling a particular story. Before you read these articles, you will have to understand this particular quadrant. It's a very simple graph. Okay. Or let's say the Y axis, we have something which is very important versus something which is simple noise. Okay. A news article, which might actually hold a lot of weightage versus something which is just done for clickbait purpose. On the X axis, let's look at things which are common versus things which are rare. Remember the rare part I spoke about. Okay. And as we put this particular graph, this particular line, if you see things which are noisy and common in nature over here, okay, I'll just highlight it for you. Okay. These are emotional clickbaits, gossips, and rumor, uninformed opinions, uninformed analysis. Okay. This particular thing up till here is something which you will have to start ignoring or something you can read in your leisure time, but not while understanding what are stocks. Okay. This particular quadrant over here, which has a bit of noise, and is also common in nature. They can be ads. They can be certain rumors about celebrities, whatever it is. Okay. They can be simply ads or something about any particular mutual fund investment, so on and so forth, or it could be a very biased opinion. So this is a quadrant which we can skip when it comes to reading news. But what's important is what's relevant to your life. 
which I've put an arrow over here, which is quite rare. You will not find the entire newspaper actually, you know, agreeing to what you believe in. Or you won't find the entire newspaper personalized to what, let's say, Jason wants. Okay, so these things will be rare. Unbiased news, which is relevant to your life. It can be rare in nature. Okay, and one more thing which is written in the article is reasonable analysis you disagree with. Remember the first point I said, spoke about confirmation bias. Read things you're going to disagree with. Okay, and as we go above the quadrant, look at things which are very important and rare for you. Use your analysis that requires you to take immediate action. Okay, let's say you have a particular stock in your portfolio and there's a very big news, something which is very actionable for you. Let's say there's a corporate governance issue or there's something very positive, you can add more in your investments. That is what's the most important thing which is on the top of the quadrant. Okay, I think it's just below that news or analysis that change how you think about an important topic. And you know, reasonable analysis you disagree with. These are the last three ones. If you can bucket your news articles into these last three ones, you're spending more of your quality time in the newspaper or in magazines, reading things which are actually more important in your life. Well, the rest of it somewhere around this quadrant is common and noise. So it's something which you can actually ignore when you read news articles. Okay, so I think I'm done with more of, you know, helping you, I mean, you know, just helping you start off with reading news articles. We'll be doing this particular exercise every time I come for picking winning stocks. And now let's dive deep into these articles, okay? So that we get a clear perspective. Starting off Monday, 13th Feb, this particular article I read on banks. Okay, now what I'll do is I'll show you what that article was, the key highlights, some important learnings you can take out from it. And finally, how do you pick stocks with a particular news article? Okay, the source was ET markets. And what the article actually said was that the net interest income showed strong growth year on year for December quarter. And another important line, which is provisioning for NPS dropped due to improving collection efficiency and rising credit quality. Okay, these are quite big words, but there were two important terms. I will break them down going forward. Okay, and this was the particular new article which I read over here. Now, what exactly is net interest income? What exactly is this provisioning we're talking about? Why is it important for banks? That's in the next slide. Net interest income. If you all actually know how a bank works, some of the professional investors might know that. But if you understand how the bank works, it's two simple things when it comes to their revenue. One is the interest earned and one is the interest expended. When you subtract them, you get your net, net because of subtraction, interest, income. And this is one of the main parameters for the top line growth of any bank. If you know banks give out loans, okay, so they get interest on that and that's their interest on. And also when you deposit your money in the bank, the bank pays you interest. So that's the interest expended. Okay, and the article says that the net interest income looks very strong for banks going forward, which is mainly due to credit offtake. Okay, the second part, which is loan loss provisioning. Now, what exactly this means and how it is important for banks. Okay, so you know, banks always keep some provision basis the amount of non performing assets they may incur going forward. This is basically a safety measure they keep. And if this particular loan loss provision is going down, then banks are a bit more confident about the loans they give. If they allocate high amount of the assets into loan loss provisioning, then they are a bit skeptical about the loans they're giving. Okay, but as this number comes down, it is a positive for banks. Okay, these rates are usually low during a boom period when everything is good with the economy. You know, the bank will say, you know what, let's give less amount of loan loss provisioning. Okay, if there's rising credit quality means the loans which they are giving, the, the kind of loans they're giving to people and to commercial outlets, they're actually giving that particular interest back on time. So there's rising credit quality and improved collection efficiency. And one thing about this loan loss provisioning was it was the fourth consecutive period when it is decreasing. So we can see a trend. Okay, banks are a bit more comfortable right now. Okay, when it comes to loaning out their funds. So two important things which are, you know, which are helping build confidence when it comes to the banking sector. Okay, the top line of the net interest income and also the operating, the loan loss provisional is actually decreasing. How can we use these two particular ideas on Markets Mojo to build a screener. I will now take you to the screener section and I will make different filters over here and I will show you how these particular ideas can get converted into stocks. Okay, so here I'm on the website. I simply go to fundamentals. 
research and make your own screen now. Okay, so now let's clear all filters. Let's start from scratch. Now, since we're talking about the banking industry over here, let's select private and public banks in industry. We have industry over here. Okay, I'll simply select private and public banks. Okay, that's the first filter, quite simple. The next one is net interest income. We can look at the one year and five year growth of the net interest income, okay? Okay, if you go to growth factors, you can see this profit growth, sales growth, but for net inco interest income, we have only for banks. Okay, so if you're confused between which ratios are used, should be used for banks, you have it in the bracket over here. Okay, so here we can use the one year and the five year average growth. So we can see the short term as well as the long term movement. The third filter which I want to add is the net interest margin for banks. We call it as the NIM. Okay, which is the margin basically on the amount of interest it's earning versus the amount of interest it's expending. Okay, so here there's net interest margin under management quality factors and let's click the latest one. Okay, and the next one is gross NPA. Remember we spoke about loan loss provision. So let's see which amount, which banks have the highest non-performing assets. So gross NPA is here itself and I'll just select latest. Now we have these different indicators and we are talking about the private and public banking space. Now if I run my analysis, I'll get all the banks in the sector and I'll also get these four different parameters we're going to look at closely. So I'll look at the highest net interest income growth. Okay, the banks which are growing at a very fast pace. And if you look at IDFC First Bank, this particular private bank has got the highest net interest income growth and the five years growth looks very strong. The gross NPA, the net non-performing assets should be low. This is not a number we're going to look at a higher number is better. We try to look at the non-performing assets should be low, which is low for IDFC First Bank. And also the net interest margin over here is currently 5.5, which is a good number over here. Okay, the higher the better. If you see the first five itself, here are private banks. Okay, so if you scroll below, I think I can see mostly private banks. The first public bank I can see is Central Bank, which is scoring well. Okay, then we can see Kanara Bank, another public bank over here. Okay, so if you see the first, I mean the majority of it, which has very high efficiency when it comes to the top line, when it comes to lower NPA. Okay, you can see all the private banks over here particularly. Now, can you invest in any of these banks? For that, we have a score for you. So if you open any of these stocks and go to the next particular tab, this is a Mojo stock. This is one of our recommended stocks. It's actually doing very well when you look at these particular parameters. Okay, so this is a Mojo stock. It's 71 I'd buy. So this is something which you can go ahead with. Okay, it's currently at an expensive range IDFC First Bank. And it's been a Mojo stock since two months, 13 days period. Okay, so we can also see the movement of the price. Okay, so let's see a one year movement. Okay, you can see it trending towards upwards. It's outperformed the sector and Sensex over the one year period, but it's only two months, 13 days. And one thing you have to understand is that the score is very close to the border over here. It was a strong buy previously and now it's come to buy. Okay, accordingly you can see Kodak Mahindra Bank. You should at least see the companies which have good dots or good dot strength over here. Okay, so this was one of the ideas on how you can actually look at the banking sector and look at the top performing stocks within the banking sector basis, the article. Moving on with Tuesday, which was 14th Feb. This particular article in Economic Times was strong demand, better supply, push passenger vehicle sales up 17% in Jan. This particular article was on the auto industry. The key highlights of this particular article there was a year on year change where three wheeler sales doubled. Okay, when you talk about three wheeler passenger sales, auto rickshaws, the sales doubled, but it's yet to reach pre COVID levels. Okay, so it's a very good growth 2x growth, but still it's yet to reach the pre COVID levels. And two wheeler sales up 4% and passenger vehicle sales up 17%. So this particular article, if you see, was mostly focused on passenger vehicles. Now, how do we actually use this particular data into making it into a particular screener? Okay, and there's one more particular statement made by Vinod Agrawal. He says that better consumer sentiment is what's driving the demand for passenger vehicles. So it's quite a positive over here for the auto industry, but within the auto industry, we need to be a bit more specific. Okay, we're not talking about trucks and tractors over here. We're talking about passenger vehicles, some of the commercial segment. And we are mostly talking about the three wheeler sharp growth 
and the two wheeler sales so the auto industry is quite big but here you have to segment it well and i'll show you how to segment it i don't think many of the investors use this particular thing so since we are talking about 3 and 2 wheeler i'll move to my screener right now and inside the screener i will show you how to select this particular idea select the industry okay so we are talking about 2 and 3 wheeler so we'll we'll just limit ourselves to this particular industry over here okay here you can see we have seven stocks okay consistent top and bottom line performance so we look at the sales and profit growth we look at the 1 and 5 year sales and profit growth you can go to growth factor you can go to profit okay i'm just selecting these particular parameters over here next you should understand the final products of the company which is the finished goods segment this was what i was talking about where many of the investors don't actually use this particular section on the website or on the stock page So I'll run this particular screener right now to see what particular stocks we have. Here we have Hero Motor Corp, Aisha Motors, TVS Motors, Atul Auto, and Bajaj Auto. Okay, two and three wheeler segment. And now I'll sort as per descending order. So if you see your sales growth for Atul Auto was at forty seven percent, but you see the long term five year trend isn't good. It's down by minus twelve point three five percent. Okay, the profit growth for the one year is good, but the five year growth isn't good. So if you see Atul Auto. the one year parameters are good so it shows that it's turning around in the one year but over a long term five year average it's not been doing good but whereas aisha motors has shown consistent growth in the one year and the five year periods okay so let's dive deep into each of these particular first two th three stocks and let's understand more in depth on what these particular companies do are they actually into two and three below for that you can simply go to company cv and go to finished goods this is somewhere i've not actually taken you all before Okay, so here is where you can actually understand what exactly the company is catering to. Okay, so you can go to Aisha Motors, for example. You can go to Finish Goods. Okay, so here, if you see, two wheeler consists of eighty eight percent of the sales of the company. Okay, our article over here, right back, was talking about growth in the three wheeler space and the two wheeler space. So here, we can actually understand what the company is catering to. Okay, is it a four wheeler company? So it's most of what eighty eight percent of the sales is coming from the two wheeler segment. Okay, so when you are picking the stock, you should know what exactly the company is feeding into the market. Let's look at TVS Motor Corp for example. Okay, here we can see the breakup. Eighty one percent is from two wheelers, but we also have an eight percent from three wheelers as well. Okay, and nine ten percent from mopeds. Okay, so here is how you can actually break down that within two and three wheeler what the company is actually catering to, what the company is actually pushing the demand for. Okay so that was the article for Tuesday moving on to the article for Wednesday now this is slightly different i spoke about stocks and sectors this is a different article where mutual funds are favoring some sectors and they are giving some they are actually removing some sectors from their particular portfolio so this was a very interesting article we do get this data month on month as well so you know in throughout the month we see which particular sectors mutual funds are now adding into their portfolio so they are favoring it health pharma auto and the consumer discretionary sector and it's cutting down on banks and infra okay this particular article was quite interesting because if you see this particular chart over here it lists all the different amcs the top amcs which companies are they buying which companies are the mutual funds selling which companies have the mutual funds completely exited from and what are the fresh buys into mutual fund portfolios okay attractive valued it stocks were the top picks by mutual fund managers if you all know we were actually talking about giving a high regard to it companies right i think in november december itself we can see a lot of mutual fund managers adding them stocks like tcs if you see tcs over here infosys okay so they are adding adding some amount of it companies over here but they are cutting down exposure to banks okay so if you can see they are actually selling some of the psu banks state bank of india Okay, Federal Bank is one of the banks which they are actually exiting from Kotak Mahindra Bank, for example. But what I think we should do is now let's look at these different sectors and let's look at the recent quarterly performance. Okay, let's look at how they've actually performed in the December quarter. What I mean by that is let's look at the fav sectors favored by mutual funds. We spoke about IT. This is December quarter result performance of IT companies. So out of all the IT companies, I went on the result corner section and I just selected IT. If you see, forty-five percent of the companies have given positive results, and only some sixteen percent have given negative results. So for the IT company in the December quarter, 
it's more of a flattish positive trend okay which is favoring for the it companies let's move on to the next one which is pharma here if you see only 21% of pharma companies actually had positive results so mutual funds have added pharma companies but if you look at the result performance it's not an entire sector movement for pharma they must have just you know picked some pharma companies which are actually doing well with auto the trend is very clear no auto companies i could see have negative performance over here whereas the 11 stocks which you're talking about they were all positive okay eight stocks positive and three only flat okay this data is available in the result corner section but this was the sectors favored by mutual funds and how have they actually performed in the december quarter okay only pharma raises a bit doubt but when it comes to it and auto we can see an overall positive sector trend consumer discretion if you see here also is mixed i can see 40% negative okay and um, 28% positive so only it and auto i think were the two ones which have done very well in december quarter or well in december quarter but pharma and consumer discretion have not done well over here but you all need to understand how mutual funds work okay it's quite different on how they actually analyze and recommend stocks when it comes to markets mojo we look at the past performance we look at the fundamentals of the company and then we recommend them we don't look at the future or forecasts whereas mutual fund managers actually look at the future or the outlook for the company okay it's a very different way on how they actually function they might think that it will be performing well for the future so they've added in their portfolio Pharma must have not done well this time with 20% companies positive only but they believe that pharma companies might do well in the future that's why they've added them in the portfolio so it's quite different the quarter performance of these particular sectors might not be good but since they believe that these particular sectors have a positive outlook or these particular companies have a positive outlook that's why they've added them into their portfolio now let's look at the sectors which were not favored by mutual funds this time we have banks over here now this is quite shocking Okay, because eighty nine percent had positive results in the banking sector, only two stocks had negative results. So the banks have done well in the December quarter, but they've not added. They've actually removed some banking exposure from their portfolio. It could be profit booking. Banks have run up quite well. Okay, the first article we read also favors banks. It said that it has high net interest income, there's strong growth, and the loan loss provisioning was decreasing. But here, if you see, mutual funds have actually exited from banks. There might be something they're actually expecting. No, which is negative for the bank, so they are actually exiting from them. And the other sector was infra, which is also something I can't actually you know draw a line with because as per the recent budget, the government is looking very bullish into spending for the infrastructure of the of the country. But if you see the capital goods segment over here, they've actually exited from mutual funds have not favored this particular segment. Okay, sixty percent companies were positive in infra, and if you see, I think only sixteen stocks or twenty percent was negative. Okay, so this was the overview of the favors they've, the sectors they favored, and some of the sectors which is not favored this time. But what we'll do is, since we have a good mutual fund section on our website, let's review the top-rated equity mutual fund schemes in Markets Mojo. Let's look at which mutual fund schemes in the equity category are actually doing well today, so that you can get some idea on how to go about investing in them. If you simply go to the mutual fund section over here, the first three big okay, we'll go to research. Okay, and the first. Three boxes over here, which are large, mid, and small cap. Okay, let's open, let's open one in each. Okay, so I'll open a large cap top fund, I'll open a mid cap top fund, and a small cap top fund. Okay, so if you want to look at the equity sector within large cap, you can get the best ranking funds over here, and the ones which are hold, and the ones which we're asking you to sell. And within each of these funds, you can also see the portfolio composition. Okay, so if you see IDBI hundred top. Top hundred equity fund, banks still are twenty five percent of this particular portfolio. Even though they are actually reducing, banks still, banks still uh, account for twenty five percent of the portfolio. You see, HDFC Bank has eight percent weightage, ICICI Bank has seven percent weightage. Another bank, two banks over here, State Bank and Access Bank. Okay, so the top rated fund over here still has banks. If you click on full details, you'll get a better idea. So you can see currently twenty five percent is banks. We have IT at thirteen twelve percent, which is another positive thing. Okay, and I cannot see any other two sectors dominating. I think banks and IT itself are is dominating this particular fund. We have defense at uh, I think five percent. Oh, sorry, public banks over here at five percent. Okay, so private banks itself is twenty five percent of the portfolio. If you add public banks, thirty percent of this particular mutual fund is allocated to the banking sector. So this is how you can actually dive in deep and look at the sector composition of the mutual fund. Okay, and you can look at mid cap as well. So if you go to mid cap. 
this this particular fund PGIM is the top rated mutual fund. Okay, and if you scroll below, you can also go here again. Once again, banks is private banking is ten percent of the particular portfolio. Okay, followed by finance, so on and so forth. And if you look at the small cap fund over here, this particular scheme, Canara Rubeco, is our top small cap fund. And you can look at the portfolio composition over here. This is still your finance and NBFC is twelve percent. Okay, so if you look at the particular article over here. Okay, so you are there actually saying which stocks the AMC's are buying, selling, but on the section on markets, Moji, you can also understand which particular stocks are there in the portfolio of mutual funds, and which particular sector they are over allocated to. Okay, so this was the third article, Wednesday, fifteenth Feb. Let's move on to Thursday. Okay. Okay, Thursday, sixteenth Feb. Now this is a stock specific article. We spoke about sectors. We spoke about an entire mutual fund category. Let's look at a stock specific article right now. Some of the articles you might get in the newspaper might be written for a particular stock, but you'll have to understand the intent of the author and also if it's reporting facts or if it's simply the author is giving his projection or his you know his opinion on the stock. I personally prefer articles where the author has actually given a report on the stock, so that I can form my particular opinion. Or else you might particularly come to an article where the author is very bullish on the stock, but the reported numbers are not good. So let's break down this particular article. Apollo Hospitals over here. Okay, they are on course with their integrated health model. Okay, and if you see the particular article, the company recently came out with its quarterly numbers, but it had a mixed performance. Even on Marcus Mojo for Apollo Hospitals, we are actually showing a flat score. Let me take you to the stock section for that. Okay. And I'm on the mutual fund section, but here, if you see, you can just go to stocks over here and simply click on this particular thing. We are at a 52 score, so it's changed from sell to hold very recently on 6th Feb. Okay, and if you look at the financial trend, I was talking about a mixed performance. Even here, we have a flat performance for this particular company. Okay, one particular um, one particular parameter which is over here is revenue per operating bed grew by 12 percent. What exactly is this revenue per operating bed? You know, when we go across different industries, it's possible that one particular industry looks at one particular parameter which is important for that sector. Hospitals or companies which are engaged in the hospital sector understand the growth by looking at this revenue per operating bed. You should actually understand this particular key key parameter. If you look at other companies in the healthcare segment, they actually report this particular number in their In their quarterly results, okay, they give you an idea on how the revenue per op revenue per operating bed how is it growing, and if this particular thing grows, it's good for the particular hospital segment of this company. Okay, hospital revenue segment here, which contributes to half of its revenue, grew by nine percent. Okay, most importantly, because the company was able to get a growth in the revenue per operating bed. Let's dive a bit deep into this particular news article. Let's zoom in a bit. Okay, when you deep dive segment wise, what I mean by that, this is the net sales, which was some four thousand two sixty three crores, from which fifty percent came from hospital revenues. Okay, but when you look at the hospital revenues, it had a nine percent year on year change. Okay, so this particular revenue per operating bed which grew helped this particular segment do well. But if you look at this particular segment over here, diagnostics and retail health, it's down by marginally one percent. Uh, is that a problem for the company not really because last year we had the covid base effect so if you know diagnostics many people were testing for covid so there was higher amount of footfall into these particular diagnostic and retail health centers but still even though we did not have many people testing for covid this time the company has still had you know a very similar revenue at 311 crore versus the time when they had a covid base effect so this is expected And discounted by the market, just because this thing is down by one percent, the entire market won't react to this because this was expected. Okay, and lastly, one particular segment, digital health and pharmacy distribution, which is where the company is spending a lot this time. Okay, so the company has reported, uh, you know, the company's profits haven't been good this time. Okay, but it it has been obvious because the company is investing most of their cash in this particular segment. Okay, so the company is investing aggressively in this space. So if you see the top line growth, it has not been. It has. If I show you the top line growth in the company over here, if I go to financials, okay, the top line growth has been at par. If you look at September, if you look at year on year, which will give an, a picture of the previous 
quarter last year it has grown by 17% and the net profit has fallen down now when you look at this mixed segment you might think that you know what the company might fall after its result but that's not the case okay if you look at the companies if i want to find out how much the company has grown since its result it's quite simple you can go to result corner over here okay since we are talking about the healthcare segment you can simply go to industry and search for healthcare Okay, so now I'm on the result corner. I've selected healthcare, and there are many companies who so can simply search for Apollo Hospitals. If you see Apollo Hospitals over here, flat result, but it still moved eight percent since the result date. Okay, so in spite of all this particular news, you know the company showing a flat trend with its numbers, it's still showing an eight percent growth. Okay, because the company, the market understands what's happening, even though the diagnostics is low this time because it had a COVID base effect. So the market is kind of understanding what exactly is happening with this company, and it's not, you know, something very excited about. So the company has actually moved up post a flat performance. Okay, I remember I made this particular statement. The market discounts the known. Okay, so the market has is aware that the company might not do well in certain certain things. I mean, the company will do well in certain things. So it has moved up actually. If you dive deep into this company, it's actually the biggest company in the healthcare services. This particular screenshot is from the Wordic report. If you go to the site over here and you click on Apollo Hospitals, you will have an option to download the Wordic report. And I think on the fifth or sixth page, we actually break down the entire industry over here. So it's the biggest company in the industry, healthcare services, twenty nine percent of the market cap. It contributes to twenty eight percent of the industry's revenue and sixteen percent of the industry's profit. So you get an idea that if a Apollo Hospitals, this particular company. is actually speaking a very high uh, proportion about the industry itself okay so 28% of the sales and 15% of the profits is come from this particular company you can also understand about this from the different industries i mean so different companies in this industry you can search it later go back to the wordic report and go and dive deeper into them as well now if you look at the healthcare service segment itself this time only 28% stocks have seen positive results With nine stocks or twenty five percent showing negative, okay. So it's a very evened out, more of a flatter performance. There's not many positive companies, not many negative companies. And as I said, the company has moved up, even though it has had a flat performance. Okay, and I've explained the reasons previously. The COVID base effect. Okay, things like the company is spending more on the digitalization of its, or the digitalization of the company. So it's fine. The people know the company is spending. The result, the results have been flat, but the company has moved up. So when you read a stock specific article I don't want you to simply read numbers. You all can't simply say okay sales has gone up profit has gone up let me buy this company. You have to understand the street's expectations as well. You'll have to understand how much the street was expecting. The company's numbers are down. Okay it's showing a flat flat trend of its financial trend. But the company might still move up depending on what the market knows about the company and what the market's expecting. Okay moving on Okay, so I think uh, we can we already reviewed this company on the stock page. So let's move on to the last article over here, which was on seventeen Feb, yesterday itself. I had done a deep dive series on mutual funds recently. I had done also on how to pick the best mutual funds. Okay, and I had spent a lot of time on the debt segment. This particular article on Mint was really interesting. Okay, key highlights of the particular article. what we figure out is that most banks are offering only 3% on the savings bank account there is a sweep in facility many people don't talk about this and it's quite shocking which can actually give you better returns what exactly is the sweep in facility i'll spend some time later on that and with bond yields moving up liquid and money market are a better option than saving bank accounts so if you want to deposit your money only for a very short period and you want high liquidity you can think of moving on to liquid and money market funds Okay, I'll show you all these funds on the website as well. I'm moving into this particular article. This is a screenshot from it, and it's broken down into savings bank account, sweep in facility with savings bank account. Let me spend some time over here. I don't know if you all know exactly how the sweep in facility works, but let's say you have a savings bank account. You can also have a fixed deposit beside it. and as let's say you set a particular limit over here let's say after every 10000 additional into your saving bank account this money goes straight into your fd so the money is sweeping in from your savings bank into an fd account 
and let's say your savings bank deposit is actually going low then the money will come from the fd back into the savings bank account so if you see the word sweep and explains itself the money is sweeping in from your savings bank and the fd and the combination of this has seen better rates than simply keeping your money in the savings bank account okay if you do a combination of this you can check with your particular bank if they offer this particular facility most of the private banks do offer this you all can actually consider this particular thing when it comes to short term liquidity but getting some better interest rate okay lastly liquid funds were doing much better with a ytm of 6.15 to 7.39 second part of market link returns you all might know savings bank and this particular sweep and facility won't be linked to the market but these the these two funds actually are linked to the market penalty on withdrawals not applicable okay but when it comes to liquid and money market funds there is some particular exit load which you will have to consider if you invest in a liquid fund and try to exit within 6 days of investment there is a particular exit load with money market funds there's no exit load one thing which you will have to understand is how soon do you get the money instantly when it comes to a savings bank account instantly with this sweep and facility so you can actually look up for this particular facility but with liquid funds over here there's a t plus 1 working day So if you give your redemption request before 3 p.m. of the market hour, then you will get your money tomorrow. Otherwise, you'll have to wait for t plus one day. But you all can check for liquid funds. Some of the liquid funds allow you to withdraw, let's say, fifty thousand instantly. Okay, so you can check with a particular mutual fund. If you all want your money to come out instantly, you can invest in liquid fund. And some of the AMC's allow you to withdraw fifty thousand. Let's let's say there's an emergency, so you can withdraw fifty thousand quickly. Okay, and lastly, money market funds have a t plus one working day. Now, since we have this mutual fund section on the website, let's look at the different liquid and money market fund schemes over there as well. Okay, so I'll go to the mutual fund section over here, and I'll go to research. And now I can simply search debt over here. Okay, so we have different debt schemes over here. Okay, so which are the top rated debt funds you could consider today? We have some options over here as well. Okay, and the funds they were actually referring to. you can see some of the guild funds or the overnight funds okay if these are kept these are investing in you know uh, debt or bonds which are for a very short period so if you look at the overnight fund which is some place you can keep for liquidity okay you see the returns evaluation over here okay so you have a one year return of 5% two year return of 8% so three year of 11.75 Okay, this is absolute returns, but you look at the compound returns. It's around four to five percent over here, slightly above the savings bank rate. Okay, nothing very exciting. Even guild funds, you can see your five percent, so on and so forth. Okay, there are funds for longer durations, but you have to understand that this particular, these particular funds, you have to keep your money for a longer duration, which give better returns. We look, look at UTI bond fund. Okay, it's a medium to long duration, but it has done very well in the last one year. is given as good as the nifty or i mean the equity market returns of 11.2% okay so 10% or uh, two year cagr which is quite good okay so instead of savings bank you can look at other debt funds one thing you have to understand with rising interest rates the savings banks uh, interest rate hasn't uh, risen at the same pace okay if they had risen at the same pace then it would be fine leaving your money in savings bank of fixed deposit but banks have not increased those rates very quickly even though we are rbi is hiking the rate of interest these particular two asset classes haven't actually increased their interest rates but when you look at the market linked bonds or bonds in the market debt funds they actually have increased their rates so you are benefiting more from there than simply sticking to a savings bank account okay So these were the five different articles from Monday to Friday. This time I didn't try only sticking to stocks. I went to mutual funds, you know, different sectors as well. I hope you liked each of those five day articles. But what is what is most important is where do you find these news articles on Markets Mojo? You can visit the stocks page. These news articles are updated every minute. So let's say I'm going on TCS right now, and there's a new section over here. We pull out the feed of different uh, from different newspapers. Okay, and you will get the latest article. So, seventeenth Feb, we had an article over here on the IT stock. So, this is one place where you can get news articles. We have the markets page as well, which gives you news articles on the general economy. Okay, on the entire nation as well. So, you go to research markets today. Okay, simply you go to news over here. You can get the Indian business news or international news as well. So, these are another place where you can actually understand where you get news articles from. And lastly, our monthly box by our CIO. This is very simple to get them. You go to Knowledge Center, 
and you can go to blogs over here. RCI actually looks at you know different sectors, different industries or market caps, and then provides his opinion as well. These are the three different places you can get insights on the economy. What's very important is adding these stocks in your watch list. You might read a particular news article, you might get good ideas, you might you know get some good stock ideas, but if you don't track them, then there is no actual new use of it. There's no practical implementation of your knowledge. You're simply just reading it for like you know some satisfaction. But if you add them to your watch list, we will reach out to you if that call on that stock has changed. So let's say you read a particular article on the banking industry. You shortlisted some five or six different stocks. But you know what, some of them are in sell or hold rated. You can add them to your watch list. When that hold becomes buy, we will send you an email alert that the particular company now looks favorable for you to invest. in. We also give you result alerts. Some of the results season is coming to an end. But if you know in the last one month, if you have had any particular stock in your watch list and portfolio, we are sending you alerts as soon as the result comes out. Okay, so if there's any particular company you shortlisted and you're not sure whether you should invest in it, we will tell you that the result has come out and if the company's fundamentals has improved or deteriorated. So you can, you know, make a decision whether you should invest or stay away from that particular company. Before I open the floor to the Q&A session, I would just tell you that there's a particular offer only for webinar attendees. At 26 to plan for two years, you're getting three months free. The recently launched mutual fund transactions will also be free for you and a particular 33% discount over here. Okay, now most of the news and the most of the articles I'm talking about, if you want to actually use them on Markets Mojo, the services I'm talking about are actually paid. The verdict report, the screen or the mutual fund section, all these are paid, paid sections. So if you're an unpaid member and you want to benefit from trading articles and then picking stocks, I think this is the best plan for you. I'll ask Mehta to drop the link in the chat box and then let's open the floor for the Q&A session. The first question for today is from Mr. Utkarsh. Hi Jason, can we use news to create a portfolio from scratch? News to create a portfolio from scratch? I don't think so. So for let's say for example, you read a particular news on a particular industry. Now you can't create a portfolio from that particular industry because you'll end up adding all those stocks in your portfolio. I would not suggest you to create a new, uh, your portfolio from scratch reading a news article, but if you read many news articles, or if you read a detailed research report on, let's say a particular large cap, mid cap segment, then you could have, let's say a top down approach and then start building your portfolio from news. There is a way of doing that. We are at Markets Mojo mostly look at bottom to up uh, the uh, uh, you know strategy where we look at stocks and then we create a portfolio. What we're talking about is more of a top to down approach. You can do that, but it totally depends if you understand news articles, segments, if you're ready to be unbiased and also ready to change your opinion as new news comes in. The next question is from Mr. Ilhas Shah. Where can we get news for stock trending? Uh, stock trending, as I showed you in the stocks page section over here. So this is particularly pulling out articles from uh, major media houses. Okay, so if you're throughout the day, you will keep getting these particular articles over here. Okay, and uh, I mean, you can also download any particular news app. If you're talking about trending ideas, uh, you can you know, particularly download a particular news app um, to actually understand trending ideas. But one thing I would like to suggest to you is that are you a short term investor? Because if a particular breaking news comes in, I would not suggest you to simply go and trade in that. If you're a short term investor, then something like, oh, you know, we have Bloomberg terminals, you know, where the news keeps flashing every minute. It's very useful for short term traders. But if you're a long term investor, you don't have to, you know, really rush with news. Even if you read the news at the end of the day, as long as you're understanding, you know, the particular graph I showed you, is it rare and very important for you? That's when you have to actually, uh, you know, read that particular article and get insights from it. The next question is from Mr. Sundar. How to swing trade in stocks? Swing trading. I mean, uh, I'm not a very big expert when it comes to swing trading. I've not actually attempted to or rather than once or twice. Uh, swing trading, I mean, it's for like a 15 to 30 day period. You're just looking for, you know, a particular swing in that particular stock. There is no, I don't have, you know, a lot of expertise in this particular thing. People use news when it comes to swing trading as well. If they know there's a particular news coming in, they might, you know, buy an undervalued stock, so on and so forth. I don't have much expertise on this particular thing, so I won't be able to help you. Sir. The next question is from Mr. Vishal. Sir, I want to invest 5 lakh rupees. So can you please help me where to invest and when to invest? I'm ready to pay, but your charges are too high for me. 
it's around 22,000 or 25,000. I don't recollect it at the right amount, but I can pay around 12K for two years. Thank you. Thanks a lot, sir. Currently, we don't have a 12,000 for two year plan. Okay, the 26 step line plan is for two years and three months. I don't think there's any discount coming up as well. You can drop your email ID in the chat box. I'll ask my team to make a note of it. So whenever we have a discount, I might ask them to send you that particular link. Investing 5 lakhs using Markets Mojo isn't much of, you know, a headache. You can diversify your investments accordingly. You can consider the new mutual fund section, invest in the top rated mutual funds. You can also look at our Mojo stock section where we have top rated stocks. We have a stock of the month feature as well, where every month our CIO will come forward and giving you a list of a particular stock to invest in. So if you have 5 lakhs, you can go ahead with investing in it. You can start off with a particular you know, Mojo stock approach. You can add the top 10 stocks in the Mojo stocks list. Create your portfolio on Markets Mojo. We will tell you about the different call changes on the stocks. I've done a lot of webinars on creating a winning portfolio with Markets Mojo. And they are available on YouTube. I'll also keep them on the webinar page. So if you would want to invest 5 lakhs and how to start off with it, I think we can, you can watch any particular webinar of that and start off with investing. The next question is from Mr. Ravi. Uh, rate iron ore stocks prospect. Iron ore stock prospect. Are you talking about a particular... Um, are, are you talking about the entire industry iron ore as well? I'll just take a minute out and see if this a particular industry classification. Mm, I think if you could just elaborate further, so are you s s talking about one particular stock or the entire industry? Just drop it in the chat box and then we'll take your question forward. Till then we can go to the next one. The next question is from Mr. Jaydev. What's your opinion on management guidance and consensus? Can we do a webinar on that too? Always treat it with a pinch of salt. Okay, this is not a straight report. When you talk about management guidance and consensus of the street, this is something, so every management will come forward to you during the quarterly earnings call and speak good about his company. You will find very few managers coming in and giving the true picture. That okay, our company is facing a headwind, will be facing a headwind, so on and so forth. Very, most of the company, the management guidance comes out very bullish on the company, very positive. Can we do a webinar on that? I can speak to our chief investment officer, Sunil. He reads a lot of these particular reports. He keeps talking about earnings call. If you all want this particular topic just drop, drop in the chat box i'll ask i think the best person to do it would be our chief investment officer mr sunil davania he might actually show you how to read across an earnings call or you know the management guidance how to separate out the salt and you know look at things which are actually important for you which are actually unbiased i think it's a really good suggestion uh, if you would like to have a webinar on that please drop it in the chat box and we'll have a word with the team the next question is from mr jha Sir, what is your view on Andhra Petrol? Andhra Petrol, okay, let me just have a look. Um, okay, so currently this stock is a strong sell. If you just share my screen, it's a strong sell on this uh, Market Smojo website. The score has also changed from sell to strong sell. So it's falling more down the line over here. Okay, and we have reasons why this particular stock is a strong sell. I can't even say it's a turnaround stock because if you look at the financial trend over here, the company is simply just coming down, 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 down. Okay, there's no... So the company also had four negative quarters over here, but then when it had positive quarters, it went up. But here it's particularly coming down. It might be a commodity play company, so the prices are not supporting it due to one reason it could be down. Okay, so I if you have this particular stock in your portfolio, we are saying it's a strong sell issue, simply exit it and don't... Think of entering this stock if you would look at it because it doesn't look like a turnaround and the fundamentals are very weak currently for the company. Okay, so we are taking the last question for today. It's from Mr. Harish. Does the news vary from sector to sector? If yes, should we interpret it differently? Yes, the news does vary from sector to sector. Okay, it's not... Uh, so some of the news articles you might read for one particular sector, some of the ratios you used to analyze a particular sector. Remember we spoke about the hospital sector, we spoke about average revenue per bed. These things can vary from sector to sector. It's a very good question for the reason is that if any particular sector, you know, has already spoken about the bad news. Okay, so let's say if there's any particular sector, let's take for example, the banking sector, not today. But if let's say the banking sector comes out and says, you know, we are having high number of NPS, we are increasing our loan loss provisions. Our net interest income is not growing. It's, you know, it's, it's falling down. This particular news will be discounted by the market quickly. 
Okay, so now next time when there's a news on the banking sector, it will think about that last news it has got and then think whether people should invest in that particular sector. When you look at sector to sector, you will have to also look at the previous news which comes in that particular sector and what's the future outlook. Okay, some of the sectors are simply commodity plays. So there might be any particular, let's say, a co company which deals with oil. Okay, and that company is not doing well at all. The operating efficiency is low. The company is not managing the company well. But simply because if the price increases, the company's top line will increase and it will go up. Okay, but some companies are not pure commodity plays. Okay, let's say, for example, an IT company. The IT company does not have any raw material or any finished good of a commodity. So it won't go up. So yes, sector by sector is quite different as well. And that's why I try to pick up different sectors when it comes to this particular series and not just one particular sector because it might not give you a wholesome perspective there. Okay, so I think we're done with the Q&A session. Thanks a lot, Methab. And thanks a lot, everyone, for joining today's event. I hope you will like this particular series. If you want me to con continue this particular series, next time when I come with episode 3, we look at different other magazines. This time we simply looked at newspapers. Next time we look at detailed studies and detailed articles. And I'm looking forward to seeing you all come for the events. Uh, on Monday, we have our latest addition to top stocks. All the Mojo professional members might know that on that particular day, we look at all the new stocks that have entered and also if there are important company updates. If you'd like to attend that particular event, you could subscribe and we'll send you a link for the Monday Mojo professional event. And looking forward to seeing you all come for the events in the future. Goodbye and have a great weekend. Thank you so much.